Welcome to the Crystal Coach Show with me, your host, Anahata, helping you live every day with clarity, guidance, and practical wisdom. Are you feeling overwhelmed, anxious, maybe disconnected? Do you ever feel like you don't know how to live a life of peace and joy? I am Anahata Roach, the Crystal Coach, and during this show, we channel divine wisdom through stories of service, spirituality, and stones for self-care. The Crystal Coach Show leaves you with a feeling of connection and the clarity it takes towards becoming the best version of yourself as you hear from thought leaders and many others to help you ignite the crystalline nature of who you really are. Stay tuned. The Crystal Coach Show starts now. Hello and welcome again to another episode of The Crystal Coach Show. I'm your host, Anahata Roach, and I am so delighted to have as a special guest today, Dr. Michelle Patrick, who's we're going to talk about the art of self and practice of self-mastery. Now, Dr. Michelle Patrick is at the forefront of self-mastery revolution, combining her profound experience as a clinical doctor of Chinese and naturopathic medicine with a robust foundation in biomedical science. Her approach transcends conventional medical practices by advocating for a holistic view of health where the physical, emotional, and spiritual dimensions are harmoniously aligned for optimal self-healing. Beyond her clinical experience, um, yeah, I lost my place. Beyond her clinical experience, is Dr. Patrick is an esteemed clinical researcher and lecturer, contributing her insights to some of the world's most prestigious academic institutions. As the head of education for Luma Vitae, she is pioneering educational strategies that foster empowerment, self-awareness, and profound healing. Dr. Pat's methodology is revolutionary. It redefines the patient's role in the healing process, encouraging an empowered stance toward radical self-realization and mastery. Through her clinical practice and educational endeavors, she administers treatments and constructs a framework that enables individuals to actively participate in their journey towards health and well-being. This empowerment extends to her teachings where she promotes self-observation and self-actualization, viewing the human form through a poetic and philosophical lens. Dr. Patrick reignites a sense of wonder in the human body's capabilities, advocating for a model of health that inspires self-love and a deep intuitive connection with one's inner physician. Her vision is a clarion call to transform traditional educational paradigms, which often alienate the individual from their innate healing potential. Through her innovative approach to self-mastery, Dr. Michelle Patrick is not just altering the lives of her patients, she is inspiring a global shift towards a more empowered, conscious, and health-centric society. Please welcome Dr. Michelle Patrick. I'm so excited you're here, Dr. Michelle. Yay! Thank you for having me. We made it. Yes, we did make it. We absolutely we did. did. Um, I, I just want to also share with the listeners that you and I have known each other for a while now. Yes, quite some time, many years. Yes, yes. yes. And um, so I, I have actually done some of your training and um, I'm, I call myself an acolyte at the <laughs> Church of Self-Mastery because yeah. you, you preach, you preach and I, and I hear it and it's, it's wonderful. And I'm, I've been so anxious to have you on and I'm just really, really so grateful you're here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're well. welcome. Well, okay. So the practice of self-mastery. I want to start with from the beginning for you, which was that you grew up in a household where, you know, 
the practice of self-care and medicine and uh, naturopathic kind of solutions were a daily kind of thing, right? Your mother was a physician, correct? Yes, truly, an, on an yes. oncologist. Yes, yes. yes. And um, so she was the one that inspired you to kind of take this up as your um, profession and um, go beyond where she went. But could you tell us why? Mm. Yeah, it was interesting. In fact, it wasn't my. It was. It wasn't even my mother that really inspired it. It was an very innate knowing. So from a very young age, you know, I was grew up in a military household, and um, but we never really lived on base. We we lived um, American Air Force. My father was in the American Air Force. We lived in villages and stuff like that. And so I was very blessed to grow up around nature a lot of the time. And from a very young age, I was very curious about our interconnected relationship with nature and I used to kind of go out into the cow fields and think this is for so much more than just gazing upon and I used to pick plants from about the age of five or six and I used to pick go out in in the cow fields and pick these plants and I used to come home with these plants and then my mother bought me a plant a plant press so I used to press these plants and, you know, this was obviously not in the time where information was readily available at the click of an internet. So we used to go to like charity store, bookstores and stuff like that and look up like hub books and stuff. like. And I used to label these plants and it was just an innate kind of obsession. But my mother, yes, she was a physician, but funny enough, she was a very stressed physician. And um, but what she did encourage is is natural alternatives to things like I was very athletic. And, you know, when I'd be injured or something, then she would take me to a more natural selection like, you know, Chinese medicine, acupuncture, um, tui na, those kind of things. So she did inspire more naturopathic opportunity um as care options but she was very very traditional um and then yeah I just I I developed a, a kind of small obsession with nutrition when I was about 11 and this stemmed from being in military school um American school and on reflection it was rather odd to like they used to come and do health checks on us health checks and um <laughs> And one health check unveiled that I had high cholesterol, obviously in my mind now that means something totally different, but to an 11 year old, I was absolutely horrified. And I came home like demanding to know why I had high cholesterol and rummaging through the, the, the shelves and the cupboards, like actually learning to read things because in my mind, I was eating good food. You know, my mother always fed us well, but it was a very American household and the American food was rife. And, you know, Fruit Loops, I used to think as a child actually were fruit. <laughs> so I was, you know, I began this exploration of what I was eating and it just became very, um, it was obsession actually, obsessed with the human body and what was going in it and our relationship to nature. And my father was not very healthy at all, actually. He was a very stressed out uh, military man, but he used to have a quite profound collection of books. And I used to read his books and actually, there was a book, Dr. Stephen Chang's Internal Healing and that he had on his bookshelf. And I read that at the age of 11. And really, that really catapulted me into my choice of purpose. But it was mm. kind of, it felt like it was always there, you know. But I, as I moved into kind of adolescence and, you know, when it becomes time to enter formal, antiquated, systemic education, um, <laughs> I did what I loved, you know, when I started with nutrition. So I've, it's always been there. It's always been there. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But I, I'm thinking in particular of a story that you told about your mother having cancer and then- um, oh, 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 yes, my mother, that, was, that was ironic as well, wasn't it, as an oncologist? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, right? Yeah. But, but then she, she healed herself, right? Yeah, she did. So um, she had a T-cell lymphoma, it was a grade three, and um, it wasn't looking good, you know? And as a somebody who worked in oncology herself, she knew that- probably at her age, systemic treatment was not going to 
be something that she wanted to take as an option for herself and the way that she chose to live her life. Mm -hmm. So as a result of said diagnosis, she just completely turned her life around. She reduced her stress. She went on a naturopathic protocol. Um, she changed everything and she actually put her cancer into remission in 12 weeks. See, that's what I think is just so friggin' amazing. And of course, it, it just kind of um, affirmed for you mm. all, all of the things that you were doing naturally. Yes. You know? It's yes. like you, you, your purpose in this lifetime, in this embodiment was to bring forth this knowledge because mm. it's, it's evident from what you're saying you have done from an early age, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I want to know, you call this recognition of the body's Mm, miracle of synergistic interdependence, if you will, this inner standing, mm. right? So can you tell us how you came to express the concept of in, in this way? In a standing of inner standing? Yeah. Inner standing of inner standing, yeah. Yes, um, it's interesting because, you know, as you know, I believe words are a casualty most of the time. And the word <laughs> understanding, I don't want to be under something. I, yeah. I want to be in it. And the way the body works, I feel like we are so somatically disconnected from it as our vessel for life because, you know, of our social interactions with the opportunity to so freely hand away responsibility for it. Right. Um, and to understand the body, it doesn't really speak to inspiration for me. So when I, when I kind of use the term inner standing it's really about connecting with the internal terrains um of what we have been given to do life with which is the body you know we the body is our tool of mastery to to live out in these realms as all of the multiple dimensions and timelines that we can have you know the peripheral vision to touch yet it is the body that we were given to explore them all so much like you would learn how to change a tire or at least put water in your car to really internally understand this ecology that we have been given and blessed with to create with, to be co-creators of universal reality of our conscious connections and the web that has no weaver, yes. then I do believe the body to be the most important source of knowledge and education that we can hope to have in this life. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that because I, you know, after listening to you, various trainings and all this, and, and I know, understand, I, I understand your understanding, but yes. I wanted the, liner, the listeners to also get kind of a window in of where, where you are. For mm -hmm. me, it's, it's like understand is a, an external thing. Right, totally. And understand is, is when you're going within. Yes. to kind of suss out what's going on yeah. and um, knowing, you know, that if, if you're, you feel the pressure or pain in your abdomen over here, it's, it might possibly be your liver, you know, th those kinds of things that you uh, get that awareness, that inner standing of what, where all the organs are and where, how they interact. Right. Yes. Totally. It's yeah. so ludicrous that we can, we can cram such historic knowledge, um, but yet we don't know where our organs are. Exactly. It's well, really, really <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, I I want to take a quick break because believe it or not, we're already at the 15 minute window. So um, I, I want, would you please tell your listeners how to uh, find you? Yes. So you can find me at www themichellepatrick.com and you can also catch me on instagram which is actually the best place to to find me which is at the earth oracle the earth oracle yes and and the website is the michelle yeah. patrick just like mine is the crystal coach yes oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay we'll be right back and when we come back we're michelle i'm going to ask you to give us a an overview of the five element theory and especially around how the organs are affected by the elements okay so we'll be right back everyone come on back Hi, and welcome back to the Crystal Coach Show. I'm your host, Anahata, and I'm talking today with Dr. Michelle Patrick. 
who is an expert on self-mastery and a all-around guru when it comes to organs and theory and the Chinese traditional Chinese medicine. So, um, and she's my guru anyway. And <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, Michelle, uh, what can you just give us a, a an overview, maybe of I know it. This is a deep rabbit hole, but if if we can kind of get a, a like a landscape picture of uh, ten thousand feet above of, of how, what is the organ? What is the five element theory first of all, and and then how do the organs kind of relate to that? Hmm. Five element theory is a theorem of wholeness. It's thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. It was kind of created around the time that the yin and yang, the Tai Chi was really explored. The idea of balance in all things, but this mutual connectedness, interdependent nature of creation and everything is whole and complete in every moment. Um, and it really highlights the link between not just nature, but nature and the human being and the human being as nature as well. So in five element theory, we have five elements, you know, the elements of the building blocks of creation and we are the building blocks of creation, the micro to the macro the, and the micro to the macro and the micro to the macro and multiple, <laughs> multiple different ways of, of looking at things. And the elements that are within the five element theory are fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. Within those elements, it is said that the human being contains all of these elements. And these elements are reflected through different seasons, you know, the external seasons of summer, late autumn, late summer, autumn, winter, spring. Um, and these are also reflected through the elements. Um, also inside of these elements, there are different organs. Right. So there are different organs that are inside these elements. So within the fire element, there is um, the triple burner, the heart, the pericardium and the small intestine. And within these organs as well, there's the yin and yang organ. Right. So mm. because again, it reflects the, the interconnected, interdependent nature of wholeness within every ecology in the human soma. Um, so the heart is the yin organ and the small intestine is the yang organ within the fire element, within the earth element. We have the spleen, which is the yin organ and the yang organ of the stomach. Within the metal element, we have uh, the lungs, which is the yin organ. And then we have the small, the large intestine, which is the yang organ. Um, within water, we have bladder, which is the yang organ, the kidneys, which are the yin organ. And within wood, we have the liver and the gallbladder, the liver being the yin organ and the gallbladder being the yang, yang organ. Now, as the human being is whole, and although we have a habit of separating because we cause separation um, in all things, we separate the idea of mind, body and consciousness or spirit or soul or whatever it is that you choose to connect to. Mm. Um, and here is yin and yang again here. Yin is the matter of the body, matter itself. Yang is the immaterial aspect of the human experience. It could be spirit. It could be Shen, as we call it in Chinese medicine. Um, the mind, the immaterial, the things that can't be touched and tasted, you know, they have no form um, are represented by Yang. So again, within this concept of wholeness, within the elements, there is also the unseen aspects, the Yang aspects of the human being, the matter being represented through the organs themselves, and the immaterial aspects being the immaterial aspects of the mind, the emotions, our psycho-spiritual attributes and virtues um, that are also reflected through the elements. And there is a wide variety of emotions that could be expressed through the elements. Um, just the very basic, like high level things, just to throw in the elements for the sake of this podcast, joy or lack of being in the fire element with those particular organs, worry um, and sympathy being in the earth element, grief being in the metal element, fear, the water element, and repression, anger, frustration in the wood element. And that's just very high level because there are a plethora of human emotions. As we know, we are a kaleidoscope of an emotional rainbow, many of the colors we don't even know. But um, so that, and all of these emotions can be placed due to their flavor within the certain elements, you know? Um, 
And also these elements have empowerments, much like everything in life does. And this is the more psycho-spiritual attributes, the parts of the mind that live within these different organ systems, because everything is a reflection in life and matter must reflect the immaterial and the immaterial must reflect matter. You know, it's like source, the very spark of life itself, the essence of what makes creation creations that no one really understands this electrical charge we can call it. This electrical charge that is what sustains life is the immaterial aspect and matter is the aspect and these two things need each other. You know, consciousness requires matter to manifest mm. and matter yes. requires consciousness to exist. So it's the five element theory for me is a com not just a complete tool of understanding creation itself, but understanding um, the, the human beings part in creation and how we can express it in wellness and health. And it's also a fantastic diagnostic tool because we can start to connect um, our ways of being, our immaterial aspects of ways of being, our chronic emotional pathologies, which most human beings suffer with, you know, our, our way of expressing in the world that often is very stagnant and is stuck in a very small variety of how we behave with our behavioral patterns those things can also be connected to different organ systems mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. pathologies that we, ex we experience within these organ systems. So it becomes not just a tool of, of diagnostics, but empowerment, because if we can see that we are suffering with certain emotional pathologies, and we also have physical, physiological pathologies in matter within those two organ systems, then we, we can see essentially where the root cause of, of our issues are. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a high level. So yes, it's very high level, and uh, and it's a good it's a good summation, really yeah. good summation of of that. Um, hopefully, the listeners that that are interested in this can it's it's enough to get you motivated to check out Dr. Michelle Patrick and um, all of the all of the wonderful programs that she provides humanity. Um, yeah, it's, you know there is. I've always been curious about this. I've got kind of like my own thought about which, what the answer is, but I want, I want to ask you, what do you feel of all the organs in the body? Because all these organs are, you know, the, the, you've explained the five element theory, but if, when you drill a little deeper, you see how, how they're all interrelated and in things that, you know, like for example, the, the, hen, the skin and the hair and all this, the kidneys, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so it's like, what do you mean? That's my kidneys. Yeah, that's your kidneys. So what do you think is for for just the lay person to become more aware of what which organ do you think is something that needs to have more attention paid to it? Mm. I mean, all of the organs. Are well, all of them. Yeah. But valid. But um, I would say the kidneys. I would say I would also say the spleen. A lot of people, you know when they have splenic pathologies, have their spleen whipped out. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's not a bad thing. And Western medicine is amazing for trauma um, and emergencies. So these things are very needed and other organs take over. But I would say the spleen or the kidneys, actually. You know, the kidneys are our root of, they say, post uh, pre-heavenly chi. They're, they contain our divine mandate. They are the mother of yin and yang in the body, and they control all of the aspects of yin and yang in all of the organ systems in the body. They are also responsible for how we mature, right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that we experience maturation in the human body, you know, with our hair changes color, our skin changes, and all of that, this is responsibility of the kidneys so essentially how we we experience longevity is essentially housed by the kidneys mm, right yes and when the Post kidneys are under stress and overworked or you know the adrenals are exhausted that that kind of work with the kidneys that that's when you do kind of like it the chi kind of starts to leak out right so absolutely and as you were saying before when it comes to organ theory, I mean, we could talk about organ theory all day because that's that's just a deeper aspect of five element theory. But within organ theory, you know, we we think that we can't see the organs, but we actually can because every single organ has a fluid that it's attached to. It has 
a sense organ. It, you know, it's so when we understand the body like this or understand the body like this, then we know where the skin is housed. Um, what organ is responsible for the eyes, you know, even though they seem like their own organ, it's really, you know, under control of the liver and stuff like this. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's just really profound. So yeah, when you understand or understand organ theory to that, that level, then you see the importance of the kidneys, you know, even in our emotional pathology, because the kidneys are also responsible for marrow for the spinal cord, which feeds the brain, you know, which in this, when in this uh, particular theory and you know the brain's kind of important so the kidneys <laughs> it's kind of. Off, a little bit yeah, a little, a little, bit. Bit. A little yeah. bit but but you know it, that that's that's kind of a given but when it comes to overall health i mean it's it's really sad to see so much um renal failure and, and disease in the world absolutely um, when you know you you could get an awareness of that as like something you really need to nur nurture nurture and nourish yeah and um to avoid having totally. yeah so i think it's it's the human nature to because we're so disconnected we don't see the body to the level of sacredness that it actually is until yeah. there's a and then we're like, oh, we really feel our mortality through dis-ease. Right. However, to really look at the body like a miracle in the first place changes our relationship with it. It truly does. Yeah. It truly does. And you're absolutely right. You know, we kind of take our bodies for granted, you know, and it, we shouldn't. <laughs> that, that's not, it's, I'm not, I'm not going to say should on yourself, but that it's, that's just not, um it's a contraindicative kind of viewpoint yes. to, to take that, to take your body for granted and your health for granted. Yes, um, absolutely. You know, we all, we only worry about that when the health is in, impaired in some way. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. And that's, that's unfortunate. Yeah. It is, it is yeah. truly unfortunate. So, you know, you have a couple of different programs that are out there in, in your website that, that teaches people about what we've just been talking about and yeah. um it, you know this is that's your that's a form of self-mastery right yes. that when you when you have uh, the information then you have more of an autonomous kind of role in your own health of course absolutely. right so yeah. um can you talk about what like for example in the inner realm that mm -hmm. i i took the inner realm course so there's there's one and then there's one that's coming uh, yes, a follow-up to that right mm -hmm. can can you talk about what these offerings are and, and what people might gain or benefit from yeah so in a realm was my baby it was I don't know how many months it was in the end because I have a habit of saying four months but then I like to over teach so <laughs> I think it ended up being six months I just keep giving and giving and giving um, it was great <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, inner realm is a deep exploration into organ theory so really exploring the organs learning the western uh, physiology of the organ but also the eastern physiology of the organ the emotional pathologies the emotion the emotional inhabitants of the organs uh, pathologies of the organs naturopathy to to kind of support the organs it's it's really an opportunity to take sovereignty and responsibility radical self-responsibility yes. for one matter you know because once we are the master of our own matter then we are the mastery of our existence you know we become a tool of mastery mm. um, so in a realm two is going to be obviously the foundational attributes of of organ theory but more of an exploration into Kind of the psycho spiritual attributes and the energetic relationships in the body to the planets and stuff like that mm. that could be pretty special oh yeah yeah really <laughs> that sounds really you know like taking it to the next level right because yeah. everything yeah. is every, we're connected to everything you know and it's like much like we say the solar system, you know, it's interesting. So if we look at our solar system, uh, the sun is its consciousness and 
or the universe, this solar system, the sun is its consciousness and the planets are its organs, you know? Um, so it's the same thing. We believe that the planets can affect our emotions. So of course the organs can affect our emotions too, Absolutely. but as the micro to the macro and everything being a reflective womb in creation, then we have connections to it all. And on levels that I don't truly think we ever really transverse, but we will be doing that in, in a round two. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so I, I don't know if you've got um, a link that you can share with people um, just to say it. Uh, it's, yeah. There's no way for me to put it in a chat. Um, maybe yeah. Emily could, our producer. But yeah. um, it, if if you want to, you can just link it up. Or I, if anybody is actually curious about that, they can reach out to me at yes. mycrystalcoach.com. No, yes. at mycrystalcoach at gmail. Yes. my crystal coach at gmail and um i can send them the link and there's actually you're offering uh, a discount to anybody that listens yes, to this are. podcast yes okay, we are cool indeed. cool yes. so all of that can be um i can send you all that information if um you the listener can uh, just send me a drop me an email at my crystal coach at gmail and i'll be happy to forward that on to you um great thank you Let's, I, I had another question for you, but I think um, it's time to take another quick break and okay. um, we'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back to the Crystal Coach Show. I'm your host, Anahata, and we've been talking with Dr. Michelle Patrick, who is a pioneer in the revolution of self-mastery as when especially when it comes to the body's inner workings and the knowledge that you can gain from the body and the responsibility that each of us hold for hold for viewing our bodies as precious miracles as they are and not just taking them for granted michelle i wanted to talk to you you have had recently a, 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 a miraculous healing yourself from you know following your own advice yeah when you had an injury in your back can you tell us about that um last year in august actually it was a year ago um i got a severe back injury um that i know i didn't i didn't i didn't know i had basically mm. when i first got the injury um i'm a bit of an athlete i'm a bit of a gymmer i do a lot of training and um I thought essentially that I had uh, a fascia tear or something like an mm. IT band injury. And over the weeks I was in Lisbon at the time and I went to see all, the, all my usual body workers and they all thought it was a, you know, an IT band problem or one of the tendons underneath the IT band. So it wasn't treated as a spinal injury. And it wasn't until the pain started moving that I started suspecting that it was a lumbar spinal injury. Mm. I thought I probably had, you know, slipped some discs or something. That's what I was thinking. Um, so I went home to the UK and essentially the next day I woke up paralyzed. And um, it was very scary. I woke up and I couldn't feel my legs. Um, luckily, my brother was around the corner because he was coming to visit me. He is also a doctor. He's a respiratory physiologist and a sleep scientist and um he showed up and I was like oh, I'm paralyzed so we called an ambulance um long story short I was blue lighted all around the country to neuros up and down the country who told me that what it looked like I had was a car crash injury and I had just been to sleep so what happened was I had slipped some discs while I was training I carried on training obviously and um, basically I had a full lumbar prolapse. So all of the discs um, in my lumbar region just slipped and trapped, uh, but they actually impinged my spinal cord. So I was told- Which is I why you were paralyzed, yeah. Paralyzed, and I was told that I needed to have radical surgery, um, but the outcomes of that surgery didn't sound like something I wanted to experience. Uh, I didn't feel a sense of overwhelming trust in the surgeon mm. um so I declined and they thought I was insane and they said they'd never seen a, a spontaneous release of a spinal cord impingement 
I asked to essentially be put on muscle relaxants because, you know, when the body's tense, the body holds injury in place. It's it's um, a protection method. Mm. So the body's tense and it's holding the injury in place. So I thought if they just put me on high dose muscle relax- relaxants, I'm in hospital anyway, then maybe it will at least, you know, not heal the injury, but release the tension around the injury and allow the yeah. spine to release. So I just was drinking obscene amounts of of hydrogen water and stuff when I was in the hospital. I'm I'm talking like obscene amounts. I was catheterized anyway because I couldn't move. Um, So I thought this is a perfect way to hydrate. You know, hydration is also a profound tool for healing. Mm. Um, And the orthopedic surgeons that I was talking with said they can tell somebody's hydration levels by the bone, right? If they have a, if they they receive a, um, a protrusion, a protruding bone injury, they can see if, if the person's hydrated or not. You know, the more mal- more hydration, the less brittle things are in the body. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to hydrate because I know that, you know, the body is a, a, a portal of water, you know, around every joint within the lubrication of the spine, there is fluid. And the more fluid there is, the more the body has capacity for movement you know and movement is exactly what I needed so I just laid there hydrating and asked to basically be sedated on muscle relaxants after a couple of days I started feeling my feet again um which was profound in itself um so my the feeling came back the spinal cord you know released itself and then I began working on actually healing the prolapse basically but it was a hundred percent hydration that allowed the movement in the body you know for sure well that's a a really that's just like a miracle in itself but that really kind of leads me to my next question for you which is you know that's kind of really put you on this path of of Mm, how can I say this? It just you you've just you you're almost a, a zealot for the uh, miracle of hydrogen, but you know, the molecule of hydrogen, right? So you this is kind of like translated into this whole different new opportunity for you as as the head of education at this company Luma Luma Vite, right? Yes. And that and and so can you talk a little bit about how hydrogen is a miracle molecule and you know why people should be paying attention yeah i mean uh, hydrogen is a building block of creation right it's it's uh the most abundant element in the universe it's also the smallest element in the universe um so and it was it goes right back to the beginnings of creation right it forms the building blocks of the stars um of the planets uh ultimately life itself and when hydrogen was fusing within the hearts of the stars you know it also was giving birth to heavier elements that really constitute the world as as we know it and hydrogen atoms present in our bodies today they're ancient they have traveled across the cosmos you know quite literally becoming part of things like the water that we drink Mm -hmm. and it's it's such a profound molecule and again it's like we don't have enough time to go into the profound nature of of this particular molecule but the the scientific research into its capacity as a therapeutic tool of of healing is really quite masterful really really and because it's the smallest molecule in the world you can imagine um the capacity it has within the physiology as far as crossing barriers in the body which we can't do you know therapeutically a lot in western medicine like getting things to cross the blood brain barrier Mm -hmm. things like that because this molecule is so tiny and it has a selective antioxidant nature it donates its electrons to the body in the places it needs to essentially not adding anything to the body or utilizing the body's energy it's it's kind of like a battery charge for the body. So it brings the body into its own homeostasis. And it's it's just really quite profound. And I was already asked to work within Lumi Vitae. So I was working with Nuno, Nuno Nino, um, absolute grandfather of, of hydrogen education. And at the time, this injury happened. So I was already kind of feet in the water, if you will. Mm, yeah, right. 
exactly that, that, isn't it interesting the synchronicities of how life kind of brings you where you need to be and oh, you know it is ever in life nothing you know, right no no there's no mm -mm, no coincidences at all <laughs> um, so um yeah i know the the research that you've you've been a part of since then since you've joined um, as the head of education, I mean, there's just so much out there mm -hmm. that, you know, that you can really like, there's, there's a way to measure how your blood gets more oxygen after drinking the yeah, water yeah. that's been charged with hydrogen. Yeah. Well, you can see it's, you know, the blood, well, the human being is a continuous moving palate and the blood is alive, you know, it's alive with blood cells. So if you take the blood and put it under a microscope prior to drinking hydrogen and then take it prior after drinking hydrogen, you get two different views of what the body looks like. You can see hydrated cells uh, via dehydrated cells, essentially, or the, mm. the blood, it's really quite profound. So it actually delivers more hydration to the blood rather than well, oxygen what it does is yes it's it's not oxygen because essentially when we create molecular hydrogen we're splitting the water molecules right we're separating we're infusing hydrogen gas into water and mm -hmm. separating the oxygen so um essentially what it does is because it crosses barriers you know like we we're saying about the blood brain barrier and stuff like that right. if you think about the mitochondria you know and the the nucleus and stuff like that, the, the hydrogen is able to cross this kind of lipid bilayer of the cell and access the mitochondria, obviously generating more energy in the body and creating a more um, absorbable environment, if you will, for other things to cross that barrier. Mm -hmm, because we mm -hmm. have a problem crossing things into the cell. You know, we take a lot of supplements. People are obsessed with supplements. But a lot of the time, they don't even make it into the powerhouse of the cell because of the state of this kind of lipid bilayer. And hydrogen is really profound in opening up the, back, the body's capacity to receive. So it actually helps you absorb more of the supplements that you're taking. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's just, it's really fascinating, this whole study, this whole uh, yeah. industry now that's grown up around that is just really amazing it's very well researched the clinical studies scientific studies it's thousands and thousands you know it's really it's really at the forefront of the wellness revolution absolutely it is absolutely it is um i was uh i was we were we were comparing our our uh, devices no we were <laughs> but um you know it it really for me, uh, having used this now for, I don't know, it's one of the first ones to get one. Um, wow. <laughs> it, it's it's really changed. It's changed my skin. It's changed, I mean, my hair's growing back. My hair's growing, well, darker. Part of that's a supplement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm feeling more energy. And yeah. it, it's just been... a uh, a very positive effect for me. Yeah. So I, I, I'm just thankful for people like you that are getting the word out and letting other people know um, that there are tools that are out here in, in the marketplace that can really assist the body's ability to function at highest capacity. Okay. And that's I, that's a part of the self mastery, right? Absolutely, totally. Yes, radical self responsibility equals right. actualization, right? So that so the one thing that I've always appreciated about you as a teacher is that you're saying I am not going to prescribe what you need to do. Yeah. That is on you. You have to figure out what's going on with you, yeah. and you know how to address that particular cause or symptom that's showing up for you because yeah. not everybody's different right well, absolutely and uh, the way we experience our environments is going to be different so if we can 
teach the person how to experience their environment, then they become the master of their environment, you know, but, and everyone's different. So um, why, you know, just give the people the water when you can build them a well? Exactly. Exactly. Um, Michelle, I am so grateful for you being here today and to sharing your, your vast knowledge um, about all the things. And <laughs> I, I can, can we again go through how people can find you and reach you and get more information about you? Yes, of course. You can find me at www.themichellepatrick.com and you can find me on Instagram at The Earth Oracle. The Earth Article. Oracle. Yes, Oracle. So, and also people, if you would like to have some information about Michelle's um, Inner Realm classes that are just amazing, uh, give me a, an email, drop me an email at mycrystalcoach at gmail.com. Thank you again, Michelle, for being here. And that's going to wrap up another episode of the Crystal Coach Show. Thanks for being here. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, Michelle. Love you. Thank you. You have been listening to The Crystal Coach Show, helping you live every day with clarity, guidance, and practical wisdom. With me, your host, Anahata. Tune in every first and third Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com, where we channel divine wisdom through stories of service, spirituality, and stones for self-care. Feel connected and reside in the vibration of love on The Crystal Coach Show. For more information and to become the best version of yourself, visit thecrystalcoach.com. That's thecrystalcoach.com. See you next time.